Hi everyone, it's Jay Witty. Hope y'all are having a great day. So I'm doing a combination of a 12 by 12 tile and a glass vase, and I'm gonna be doing a split cup pour over the vase, and of course it'll cascade down onto the tile. The first color that I'm using is the Decor Americana Metallics Amethyst. And the next color is the Deco Art Americana Metallic Silver. And the consistencies are a mound on a mound on a mound, because you want those paints to be really thick. My next color is a combination that I put together of the Deco Art Dazzling Metallics Teal, Prism Pour Metallics Royal Sapphire, and Liquitex Basics Bright Green, uh, Bright Aqua Green, and made this really pretty shade of teal. And then I used the Deco Art Americana Metallics Obsidian. Oh gosh, such a mysteriously dark, gorgeous color. Very yummy. So those are the four colors that I'll be putting into my split cup. And Again, like I said, my consistencies are a mound on a mound on a mound. The pouring medium that I used with these um, is 50% the Liquitex, 50% Liquitex pouring medium effects and 50% Liquitex pouring medium gloss. I mix those two mediums together. Um, and then the pouring medium is probably about two parts of the pouring medium to one part paint. And it made a perfect consistency, especially with those Deco Art Americana Metallics that come out of those little tub jars. Um, perfect consistency. The only thing that I had to alter or change up a little bit was that custom teal. I still, it wasn't quite thick enough, even using the tube paint from the Liquitex Bright Aqua Green that I told you about, couldn't get it to a mound on a mound on a mound. I could only get it like on a mound and a half and then it would sink in <laughs> if there's such thing as a mound and a half. So I had another uh, pouring medium on hand that I know is really, really thick or thickens things up nicely. And that is the Pouring Masters Gloss Medium. I mean, that stuff is really thick, so just a little bit. So that teal color only, that was the only color that received an additional uh, pouring medium to it. No flow trawl, no water, no, no other special stuff, just those pouring mediums and the paints. So everything I've uh, just went over is listed in the description box down below. So you can just tap on the title, it'll take you right there. So every once in a while, I like to do these combinations of a vase and a tile. Um, they just turn out to be very pretty pieces um, that complement each other. I clean my tile and the um, vases off um, with rubbing alcohol to remove any oils or residue or anything from my hands after handling them. And I just absolutely love how this works. I love doing it. And the reason why those cons the, the consistency needs to be very, very thick. I mean, I could stand there all day and just pour <laughs> over a vase like this. But um, because of the gravity pulls it down. And I do several pours on top of this vase. And each time you do that, you know, your design just changes up. I mean, look at that right there. Just absolutely gorgeous, but that's not what I ended up with because I had to pour again. And the reason being is you want to make sure because of the shape of the vase and gravity that you're covering every outside aspect of that vase. Um, and that's why I always do this on a spinner. It gets me to, I am able to rotate it around and make sure everything is covered. And once that's finally covered and the paint begins to slow its drip down a bit, I will remove it off of the tile. Now, you're not going to see that whole process, but um, I'll remove you know, it off the tile that's on those solo cups for a purpose because they help hold it up, which is great. Um, it gives you enough clearance to be able to put your hands, you know, carefully 
and your actually your fingers carefully around it to remove it off the tile if I'm making any sense. So I usually stack those solo cups up about three to four to give me enough clearance where I can grab and get that vase off of there, <coughs> excuse me, without disturbing what's on the tile below. So, and then you take a popsicle stick and you do just like you would on your canvases. Um, you know, you gotta make sure that you're catching those drips and, you know, wiping those off. Um, so these pieces eventually will get uh, covered in resin. The tile I will finish off after it gets resined, I will finish the back off with either a caulk, um, that, um, caulk board stuff, um, cork, not caulk, cork, <laughs> heavens forbid, it's Monday, cork, or a um, thick foamy type material. And then I suggest um, what you do with them is you can prop them up in a, a decorative easel um, and you can place them either on like your fireplace mantle, you can place them on a side table or end table in your living room or family room, or a decorative piece on a dresser in a bedroom or on a nightstand. And of course the vase complements it, so if you have any fresh cut flowers, you can certainly put those into the vase. So um, I made a set one year and gave to my son and his wife for Christmas and they love it. So they're just really pretty and it's a real good reuse. I mean, these tiles, I have a whole half a pallet of tile out in my garage left over from when we tiled our house years ago. So they make a great canvas or, or you know, alternative to a canvas. And I've, you know, over the years accumulated these little vases when you get a flower or floral delivery. So it's a great way to reutilize um, materials that you may have laying around the house. <coughs> Again, excuse me. Um, so like I said, everything's listed again in the description box down below. Please, please feel free to tap on the title and take a look. It'll take you right there. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm glad you're here. I do invite for you to subscribe. You can hit that notification bell for future uploads. And I'm going to let you watch the rest of this video. And until next time, guys, stay safe, take care, and blessings to you all. Bye-bye.